Hey, everyone. Hey, bag ladies and bag dudes. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. This is my husband, Danny, and you're watching Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us for, for Social Sunday. I know many of you, if you celebrate Christmas, are getting ready for Christmas Eve in two days and then Christmas Day on Wednesday. I see Maria is watching from San Antonio, Texas. Cheryl from Ohio. So thank you everyone for taking a little bit of time out from your busy weekend to join us for Social Sunday. We're really excited about the chat for tonight. We have a few things to talk about, a uh, great giveaway at the end. So thank you for joining us. Um, before we get started, I wanted to announce the winner of week seven for the Park Sling Backpack Sew Along that's happening over in the Facebook group. This is being hosted by Michelle Graham. So thank you so much to Michelle for hosting the Sew Along. And that week seven winner is Jennifer Debnar. So Jennifer, thank you so much for participating in the Sew Along. And uh, whenever you see this or get a message from Michelle um, in the Facebook group, go ahead and email me for your prize. And my email is sarah at so sweetness.com. And I'll that's leave that Sarah one up with no the show. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, go find your uh, Christmas sweater in uh, Williams. They were asking why are our ugly Sarah Algren asked They're where? actually, I think I just threw them in the dryer. So oh. good luck to Violet finding them. Stop if they're the, in the dryer. dryer. Dig it. No, I'm just kidding. Arlene says, Danny, you look awesome. Yeah, we're, <laughs> that's, that's the comment of the. I'm leaving that up for next week's show, even. Before too. the show, he's like, I don't know, does this t shirt look okay? Should I did I, not say that. It was, should, should I wear my glasses or not? Should I wear my glasses? Should that's I all take I asked. My glasses? No, you were asking about the t shirt. I get these evil eyes. <laughs> the lights reflecting. <laughs> I feel evil when I look like that, so I gotta look down. Yeah, Danny, uh, we closed down our house on Friday, so we're slowly getting the new house ready, and Danny's looking uh, forward to getting some new technology for our filming setup in the new house so that it can be bigger and better. So. Yeah, I hope so. New cameras, different angles, should be a lot of lights and pizzazz, sparkles, and cool graphics. Yeah, hopefully. At least in my head it was that way, will it happen? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um, actually, we had a suggestion. I, I asked in the Facebook group recently for our live shows, what is something that we can add to the show that would make it more fun? So on the Sunday shows, the first and the third Sunday at least, um, I talk about notions, fabrics, uh, a sewing tutorial, book review, and I was wondering what else we could talk about on Sundays, and someone suggested um, sort of a behind-the-bags feature. So talking about a particular you, sewing pattern. Whose idea was that? Um, I didn't write it down. Mm. I'm sorry, I meant to. I apologize. I did see it where you wrote that, and I should have probably wrote it down myself because I thought it was a great idea. Yeah, it was a great idea. So I'm going to be talking about a particular bag tonight, um, just some details about it, how I came up with the design, and then I'm going to be showing a few examples um, that I took from the Facebook group of people that have made this particular bag over the years. Um, so the first bag is, you can hold off on the, oh, go ahead. Uh, Sarah had a funny comment. Mm -hmm. Sarah says Danny could dance, that would be good. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first bag that I wanted to talk about for the behind the bags feature is the Aragon bag. So I brought a few Aragon bags out of the basement. <clears throat> this one I made recently because we filmed a video for the Aragon bag this year. This one was made using Anna Maria Horner fabric and it was from the Sweet Dreams fabric line. And I'll pull the original, well, let me pull another one that I made this year out. Um, this one, it's a little harder to see the, the pocket detailing because it's a really, um, I don't know, all over print. Uh, but l let me show you the very first Aragon bag that I ever made. So this is the, the one that I made for the pattern. This was made using fabric designed by Rashida Coleman Hale, and this was from her Koi fabric line. And um, I love this fabric personally. Yeah, me too. I think it's a really great, in particular, diaper bag fabric. It's got the zipper on the back. Um, so a few, uh, maybe I'll let you hang on to this for a second. A put few, it my... no, it's going to be blurry then if you put it up there. Just put it over here. Um, so a few details about this bag. Um, it's called the Aragon Bag, and it was named after uh, the Aragon Ballroom, which is a concert venue we have in Chicago. Um, the concert venue is basically a standing room only, so there's no seats. Everyone just stands. There's the stage. Everyone just stands around. Danny's least favorite type of concert venue to go with me to 
Um, cause I, I, my parents and I, we like going to concerts. I like going to concerts, but I'll tell you what, Sarah is about this tall. The crowd's about <laughs> this tall and she wants to do standing area. And I didn't know these places actually have a second like level balconies. You could sit down and actually watch the concert. Uh, not so, all places have balconies though. Uh, the one we were at did, and I didn't know that for the first two times we went there and we were literally standing in the middle of a crowd. <laughs> I don't know how Sarah saw anything. I think I picked her up at one point even. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, it, I couldn't see. Sarah liked it, but me personally, I'd much rather be in a seating area. And... Danny likes to sit down. If I go so to a concert with my parents, they like to get there early because uh, my dad likes to get like right in front of the stage, which is, it is so loud, which is really fun. That's probably why you can't hear me. Uh, Bob, <laughs> I also want to give a huge shout out to... Uh, I've been painting the past two days. He's been my partner in crime both days. I don't know. How, you know, he's about 70 years old now. <laughs> Something out there. Don't even and, talk uh, like that. He works twice as hard as I do. I'm not going to lie. He's a tough dude. And uh, thank you so much. Yep. That's my dad. Yep. I know you just said Bob, but. Yeah. Um, so this pattern was designed in 2014. I had a friend that was expecting her first child. Um I, it was inspired by a bag. I remember going to like an outdoor festival where they had like a lot of food and it was like a community event. And I remember seeing a diaper bag. It wasn't the same as quite the same as this, but I remember noticing the pockets, like it had pockets all over the place, like pockets on the side, the back, lots of pockets. And I thought it would be a really cool thing to design a diaper bag. And, um, my first diaper bag when I had the kids was a handed down tote bag. So it wasn't a handmade bag. It was just a store-bought tote bag. I remember it had yellow ducks all over it. It wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't a huge bag, but at the time, I don't know, it did the trick. I wasn't sewing a lot when the kids were born, and this was before I started designing patterns. So that's what I used. I certainly would have loved to have a nicer diaper bag like this. Um, because my kids are not currently in diapers, uh, what I generally use this particular bag for is carry on on an airplane. I really like it because it can fit a lot of um, uh, my Kindle, lots of assorted things. Yeah, uh, another bad habit. Find, find stuff in these bags. You know, another like bad habit that I have because I make so many bags is that I'll use them a few times and then leave little leftovers in. Like Danny just pulled these pens out of the well, side. It's good to have them. <laughs> Eat them. Um, some bags I have. Um, when I used to take them to lectures, because I would leave things in them, people would look at the bags because people like to see the insides. Yeah, that's someone just other pockets inside. They would, here, let me show uh, a different one for the pockets because it's a little bit more visible. Um, I would take bags to lectures and there would be like money left inside, like change or even dollar bills. And so. She just didn't want me to show you guys the pockets. <clears throat> oh, there's a pillow in here. Um, go ahead, you can. No, you like already to. stole it from me. <laughs> You know, every comment I saw come through just now about the concert, everyone said they'd rather sit down. Um, I'm not alone. Thank you, guys. So mm -hmm. one side of this bag has a gather pocket that goes from one end to the other, and there's a, a stitch divider down the middle, so it makes two pockets. Is, yeah. There you go. It's a pinch like this. I'm going to grab from the pocket Okay. Here. Thank you, Danny. And if you flip it over, then there's um, the zipper on the other side. Down here. There's a zipper on this side. And then on either end, there's uh, gathered pockets, just like there are, are on the outside. There down you go. The bottom. Good job. And of course, the one I already showed the the pocket on the the zipper pocket on the back, but there's the other zipper pocket. You know, I did hear Vina White. I think missed her first show on Wheel of Fortune. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying, but maybe. So the they reason I the show. reason I like to use this particular bag for my carry on. Um, because I usually tend to buy a, at least a bottle of water. Um, this is really handy for that. Um, I can put my cell phone in the side pocket. Um, so it's pretty handy. I love this bag. What else did I, did I not say about that? Um, I think that was it. So that says, doesn't look like a diaper bag, very pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, all right, so now we're gonna show five pictures that we've uh, culled from the Facebook group over the years of people who have made the Aragon bag. Danny's gonna put some pictures on the screen. This first one was made by Alex Radu, and she made this in a really great graphic fabric to match her dress, and she looks gorgeous as always. I really love when Alex makes bags because she always poses with them in front of her great pool. Um, this one was made by Connie Wilkinson, and she made a matching diaper bag, uh, diaper changing mat. Um, the Stripes Aragon bag was made by Haley McGeno. 
And this one was found over on Instagram. I really love that it's more of a neutral style of bag with that particular print. Um, Leslie Smith made this Dr. Seuss version with the name embroidered on the flap. And it's really cute, especially the strap that with the, right the stripey fabric. And this deer version was made by Lynn Wright. And she added, it's not in the pattern, but she added the piping to... Um, the out, the outer great. edges and the pocket, she modified that front pocket a little bit. So um, that was a really cute fabric with the deer print. And, um, of course, everyone did a really great job. And, uh, yeah, so every once in a while I'm going to be doing a Behind the Bag segment. We'll talk about a different pattern each time. And i um, looking forward to pulling some bags out of the basement for that particular segment. All right. Um, all right. Danny's favorite part uh, of the Tuesday show. Well, second favorite part, because usually you do your bag of the week. I kind of hijacked you this week with that Aragon bag feature. Um, but uh, we'd like to invite all the bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud. Go ahead and let us know if you're a bag lady or a bag dude. I'm curious. Uh, I haven't asked in a while, but I'm wondering if there's any first time bag makers or wannabe bag makers I know I've seen recently a few pictures posted in the Facebook group that I can recall um, from first-time bag makers. This past week, I saw a really great Park Sling backpack, someone's first bag ever. Can you believe someone's first bag was the Park Sling backpack? Um, That's amazing. Kudos to you, whoever that was. And there were a few other great first-time bags posted, so it always makes me excited when someone's chosen one of my patterns to make for their very first bag. That's really exciting. You know, just thinking of Park Sling, I know Renee's newer bag dude the past year. He's been really kicking butt, and I think he said he made like 10 Park Slings this past year, uh, approximately, you know, maybe 8 to 11 or somewhere around there. But uh, that's pretty awesome, especially for a newer a sewist. And trust me, I, I know it's, um, I wouldn't say difficult, just a, it's a larger bag. Lot of yeah, it's a longer sewing, so. pattern. There's a lot of features on it, um, especially the two zippers on the front. So, yeah. Yep. Very cool. Um, so periodically I talk about games on the show, just games that I like. And sometimes I get emails from people asking me for game suggestions. And since Christmas is a couple days away, I just wanted to talk about some of my favorite um, either board games, card games. Some are family games, but just games that we all like to play. So... Um, I've linked to all of the games that I'm going to talk about in the description in case you kind of miss what I'm saying or miss the name. If you'd like to investigate any of the games further. Um, these are not affiliate links, uh, so I'm making no money off this. I just wanted to share some of my favorites and link to them. Um, and we pulled together some pictures just so I can talk about them. And uh, you, can see, further ado. you can see kind of what they look like. So Bananagrams is kind of Love a, this one. Go ahead. It's like Quickly. Scrabble that has tiles, and you make words and then connect together. Yeah, each person has their own set of tiles, though, so it's not like a Scrabble board. Um, this one is called uh, Card Lines Animals. Um, everyone has four cards, and you have to put the cards in order of like how long the animal lives or something like that. It's really, ch it's actually really challenging. Go ahead, I'll let you do this one. Uh, code names you have to describe um, some different words in groups, and you try to get multiple together at the same time. Uh, Gravity Maze, so I think Fun makes several games like this. Gravity Maze, they give you um, two spots and you have to fill in the rest of the spots and uh, gosh, I don't have enough time to describe them. This is one of our recent favorites, the Magic Labyrinth, that uses a magnetic ball underneath the board. Hidden maze under the board. Yeah, so the board covers the maze and you... This is um, a 3D tic-tac-toe uh, and you play different levels. You go big to small. And you could do three of the same Different shapes. Different colors. Yeah, it's like tic-tac-toe on steroids. Uh, rat Attack Cat is um, a fun game we've been playing for years. Everyone gets four cards, and you have to get the lowest set of numbers for your cards. That one's really fun. <clears throat> Sequence is kind of like um, cards and a board game. So if you like playing cards, chances are you'll love playing Sequence, and it's really fun um, as a family game. Sleeping Queens, uh, again, we've been playing this with the kids for years since they were really little. As long as the kids know math, basic math, like 3 plus 1 equals 4, things like that, they can play this. And uh, this is Timeline Inventions, kind of similar to that animal game that I talked about earlier, except you have to put the inventions in number order. So. Yeah, you don't see the actual date, so I have like a typewriter and I have a telephone. And you got to try to guess in the timeline in your cards where it fits. Some of them are like really far back inventions like paper, oh, yeah. paper or first book uh, um, or there's just tons yeah. of different ones. You wouldn't think how far back they actually go. Yeah. So those are our favorite games. Uh, let me know if you've played any of those games before. Um, we have a huge cupboard in, near the kitchen with all the, the board oh, games man, and yeah. card games. 
huge. I mean, eight feet tall, about three feet wide. And I usually like to keep um, a smaller card game like Uno, something smaller, not like a huge board game in my purse. So when we're going out to a restaurant that when we're waiting for the food, we can all play a card game. Um, Lately it was tipsy actually, because I remember the, I always hear it in the car, we're driving around, it's like all, it's like a checkerboard almost style, but it goes on one end and you flip it over and the, the items move. It's like a, a maze almost. That's an actual to... board game. I'm surprised. Yeah. We, uh, we have no shame about going into a restaurant with like a an actual big That's, board game. That's I think game. The, the a thing that can help a lot of parents with younger kids is you bring a card game, a board game, something small, easy you pick up, put down, won't get damaged at a a restaurant. It's something to keep the kids busy, and they're not saying you know getting doing bad stuff like opening sugar packets or doing whatever. <laughs> you know, kids can get in stuff. They want to explore and have fun, and I I'm not I'm one of those kids, so I understand what goes down. But if you preoccupy mm. their time with something that's fun, and then the waiting game's not so bad because it goes yeah, fast. Yeah, it makes the time go by really fast. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's just like, you know, extended family time besides the dinner. So it's fun. What I'm it's paint from painting. I took a shower <laughs> before I came on, but it didn't. It's like in my hair. So I don't want to <laughs> scrub it out. It'll come off eventually. Um, Someone oh. asked what it's on my arm. That's why. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to give a sneak peek. I know I've been really dragging about finishing the four new patterns. We had a long discussion about it yesterday because I was being really hard on myself about, yeah. like, why is it taking so long and um, I'm not doing enough. And I think Sarah's made, I told her, you know, she's used to doing 60, 70 hours a week of work. You can only do that so long. And she's got other hobbies and she wants to do stuff. And we're moving. We got a lot of stuff going in the house. And we're adding new stuff to the shop. And she does most of the shop stuff, you know, finding vendors, finding the items, getting it made for us. And we've added a lot with the zippers, the pulls, the hardware. There's been a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And Sarah is the primary person that's taking care of all that stuff. We added new inventory systems. Um, when we're switching to the new website, I'm going to take more of the load of that, if not all of it, hopefully, um, to help her out. Because I think she tries to put too much on her shoulders. And then in, when she's not reaching these goals that she had in the past... Because she didn't have these other distractions. I'm not saying they're distractions, but other stuff going on. Uh, I think she took it personally. Like she only sees like how many patterns did she do this year and how many mm -hmm. we made turned out. But there's a lot more facets to our business besides patterns. And um, you guys can understand that. And I, I felt bad for her. So I only spanked her butt twice and said, get back on the <laughs> horse and uh, you're gonna you're doing fine. Anyway, so I wanted to give you like a, a really small sneak peek of the fourth pattern because I just finished sewing it yesterday. I was really excited about it. Oh, when she said I was painting, she sent me the picture. I'm like, wow, it looks so nice. Uh, I'm like, where I... did you buy that? Uh... Oh, you get it. If you see that, you pretty much see the whole thing. Just... Okay, that's all I'm gonna give. <laughs> if you guys get creative, cut that, put a mirror on the other side, and you get a general. I'll idea. show. I'll show the four complete views of the patterns um, when we're closer to having the videos filmed. I guess does that sound fair? I would actually show it right away. I mean, mm. if that's me. I seriously would, uh, I'm the guy that gets gifts and I get, yeah, I don't wait till birthdays. I'm so hard. It's so hard for me, even at Christmas. I mean, this year I did give Sarah's birthday presents on her birthday, but generally. Yeah, I was really proud of you for that. Generally, too. man, I'm like, I love to see people's reactions. I want to buy more gifts. I'm like, I'm a, you know, Bronwyn's the giver, but in my family, I'm the giver. You know what I mean? <laughs> I enjoy buying people presents and sharing their, my happiness with them. Oh, what they're guessing? What is it? A gym bag? A cat carrier? A car carrier? Hmm. Pet carrier? Interesting. Ooh, what is it? It's it's a pretty good question. All right, so we have arrived at the question and answer part of the show. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type your question in the comments right now, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch the show. It can be a question about a notion or tool, um, sewing related question, bag making a related question. Go ahead and type your question in the comments now. Danny's going to put a few on the screen. Barb um, had a funny comment. She says, it, if it's a pet carrier, <laughs> it needs wheels. I have a fat dog. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. <laughs> that, would be, that would be really funny, actually. Someone carrying, like, wheeling their dog along. Yeah, that would be cute. I like actually, it. I've actually seen that before. Really? Yeah, taking their dog for a walk, and it was like a stroller kind of on wheels, like a carrier on wheels. Um, I've seen dogs where they have injuries to their rear legs, and they're almost yeah. like on a, a wheelchair. Yeah, I've seen that. A sled seen, almost with wheels, I would I've say. I've seen that a lot, and yeah. they're like going, going at it and stuff. All right, so um, let's see. I see it's uh, Adelia's <laughs> birthday, so um, I think, is that right? Uh, I'll go back to that. Yeah, happy birthday, Adelia. Uh, Bronwyn says, feel free to be the giver of gifts to Bronwyn, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> 
Someone guessed it's my bed for when I'm bad. It needs to be a little bigger. It's probably just for my head then. Oh, that's a good question. Right there. Oh, you're higher up on them. Jennifer says, uh, favorite way to prioritize or plan projects. Uh, I used to be better at this in the past. Now my method is um, if you finish this task, then you can do something fun like um, a selfish sewing project or um, start on a new bag pattern. So if you're working on something, maybe having a hard time finishing it, um, make sure you reward yourself after you finish that task. Or maybe it's not even a sewing related task. Maybe you're like, um, you know, if I just make dinner three nights this week, um, I'm going to give myself a reward and I'm going to sew... Um, whatever, whatever you're sewing for yourself, a mini quilt or a pouch, uh, whatever. Miranda says, if someone were new to bag making, what would be a good sequence of your patterns to build their skills? That's a great question. Baker Street bag. It's got a zipper. It's got a nice pocket. It's a free pattern and a free video. Um, you can find that on YouTube or on the website. Again, that's the Baker Street bag. Then um, I would get something with a curve. Okay. Like something, uh, you could, I mean, a Polaris bag. Easy Leather Hobo bag is another free one with a video. Yep. Um, for pouches, we did a free, a few free pouches this year for book club. Yeah, even the cylinder, um, that people turn in pet carriers, what is that called? Um, the, the Faithwell storage bin. A lot of people made, I saw pets. someone posted one that they had made for a hedgehog. So Michelle oh, Graham. Oh yeah, I saw that too. Michelle Graham, um, if you go over to our blog, sosweetness.com backslash blog, um, there's some pattern hacks as well. Michelle Grand made a pattern hack for the Faithwell storage bin, um, so it has a lid and a, an opening on the front, sort of like a cat tree. Is yeah, that how exactly, you would describe uh, 100%. it? Yeah, exactly, 100%. So people have been making them for not only cats. Uh, we saw guinea pigs, hedgehogs. What else did we see in the in that Faithwell storage bin? Mostly cats, I saw. A yeah, lot of cats. a lot of cats. Yeah. Um, but to get back to that question, I, I honestly, Sarah has a lot. You know, if you take any of those bags, there's a lot of add-on videos to do different zippers or pockets. Uh, that you can customize those said bags and make it your own and adding a new technique into it. So if you like the Baker Street bag, use a Baker Street bag and add one of these techniques and you have your own to whatever version. That's what Sarah does for all of her bags. So if you get a Sublime bag or you get whatever bag you like of Sarah's, there's a lot of techniques you can apply from her other videos into those and make it your own. I see a lot of people doing a lot of hacks. You know, one of the hacks I came to my mind was um, it's Michelle's hack. And it's the zipper, it's the vertical zipper. Uh, what on the Paladin pouch? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. It's so really the cool. Paladin pouch. Do I have any in here? I don't think I do. Um, but Michelle Graham made a pattern hack for a vertical zipper on the front and to make it a crossbody bag. So that yes, was really cool. I thought it was super cool. Um, but I, I have to say, for newer bag makers, I would suggest sticking to the pattern. Um, well, that's what I'm maybe, saying. Once you make the pattern, maybe make the pattern once the way it's written, and then uh, what do you think? <laughs> it's like a mute button. Danny, don't talk. Right? Grab your hand. <laughs> uh, maybe make the pattern once as it's written, and then um, as you as you get more confident, then add some. Um, that's what I was special saying. Special Honestly, make the picture yeah. bag if you enjoy. I know. It, then add to your. They you know, couldn't see me grab your hand because the question was in front of the screen. Maybe I just want to make it apparent to everyone that she's <laughs> grabs my hand. And I'm like, maybe move the question, and then I, I'll do it again when I did. Uh, Jackie says, I need a really good aid for machine needle threading. What's the best? Oh, I saw a tool recently. I haven't done, I haven't talked about it on Social Sunday yet, but let me, maybe I'll talk about it next Sunday. Um, needle threading. I'll write myself a note. I don't even remember what it's called. I remember seeing it on social media, and it's this little blue tool that um, if your machine doesn't have an automatic needle threader, it'll thread it for, it'll help you thread it more easily. Geraldine says, Sarah, when using sew and foam, how do you keep your fabric smooth and not loose looking? This is after the bag is made. Um, well, first off, you can do a lot um, before you start sewing your bag parts together. So what I like to do is, obviously, I like to iron the fabric so that it's nice and smooth. And then I'll iron it again on top of the foam interfacing. Even though the sew and foam isn't uh, fusible, it sort of has a nap to it. And so when you iron it iron the fabric on top of the foam it kind of kind of makes it not exactly staticky but it, it reminds me of static cling it kind of makes it cling to the um, foam a little bit and then you can put your wonder clips around the outside and uh, machine baste it um, 
of course, I always iron the bags when I'm finished with them, but I, I think I know what you mean because it's a sew-in foam. The fabric's not attached, so um, I know a lot of people like to use Shapeplex before they um, attach it to the foam as well. Um, I usually don't just to save on interfacing, but that's another option as well for making your finished bag look extra smooth if you're using the sew-in foam. So there's a couple options there. Candy says, I've been working on the Sublime bag all day having tension trouble when trying to put on the accent pieces, any suggestions? So I guess it depends on what material you're using for the accent pieces. I made a couple of Sublime bags with cork as the accents, um, but I know a lot of people have used quilting cotton. Um, tension troubles, when I hear tension troubles, I, the, the two things that pop into my head are um, change your needle, sometimes when the needle starts to get dull, um, things as far as the the thread and sewing along aren't as tight as they normally are. And um, what, was I, what else was I gonna suggest? Um, lengthen your stitch length. A lot of times when attaching the accents, uh, the layers obviously are thicker because you have more material involved. Uh, for top stitching the accents, I usually like to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters. What else can we do as far as um, tension? Um, if you're having a lot, a lot of difficulty, you can always um, um, test out on a few scraps of uh, fabric and interfacing first. So I'm sure you had some extra cuttings from when you were cutting out your pattern pieces. Try to simulate the same amount of layers that you're going to be heading into as far as attaching the accents and give it a few goes with your machine just to work out any kinks before you get to the actual fabric. And also walking foot can be really helpful if you're having trouble with um, the extra layers. Uh, some machines need a little bit of extra help in the form of a walking foot, um, so that can be another option. Susan says, do you ever use an invisible zipper in a bag? Um, I have n I've, I've, ever, I've actually never used an invisible zipper in a bag. I have used them in garments before. I feel like it's a little more, um, the invisible zippers I feel don't tend to slide as smoothly as um, the handbag zipper is um, one of my favorites as far as zipper usage in bags um, or even the number three zipper. Um, I, I just feel like it's not as sturdy as the zippers that I usually use in making a bag. So um, I have not used it for bag making. Also, I generally tend to use uh, a different foot or a different insertion method for the invisible zippers because of the way the zippers are formed, which makes is the reason why they're invisible. Um, so I I try to steer clear of the invisible zippers in the bags. Jan says, what is the best tool for marking on dark fabrics? So I have a couple, let me see if I could pull them out. Um, Clover Choco. Clover Choco in white. So this has uh, chalk powder in it and there's a little wheel. So when you um, go along with your fabric, you can probably hear it. That's dispensing, the wheel dispenses the white chalk. And uh, it comes in other colors. I don't care for the other colors at all because the other colors I found I had a hard time getting off the fabric like pink, blue, yellow, gray. So I usually stick with white. I have another tool here. Let me let me grab it. Sarah, here's another uh, pro tip. Look at her nice pants, everybody. Ah, uh, my pajama pants. Uh, when you talk, try to talk forward because they won't hear you if you're talking to the ground. Oh, sorry. Um, another tool I like is the Sew Line Pencil Trio. This contains three different colors of lead. I for the dark fabrics, the white lead is really good. And this either brushes off like chalk or you can use a little squirt of water to get that off. Uh, we have both of these in the shop in case um, you're in need of either of these tools. I like both of them equally. Um, they have different yeah. tips to they how have, they apply. They do have different tips. This, this is a roll. wheel. This is a wheel and this is uh, just like a little pencil lead. Um, Sandy says, do you ever use nylon or poly webbing? Is it hard on your hands? Um, nylon webbing I've used for a few projects. I don't think I have any of those projects in the sewing room right now, but the Picnic in the Park Cooler from Minikin Season 1, I used uh, webbing for the, nylon webbing for the straps. Um, a few other projects I used nylon webbing for the adjustable portion, like the um, two of the backpacks that I've designed have uh, nylon webbing, but it's not for the main portion of the strap, it's just for the adjustable part. The Park Sling backpack has a little bit of nylon webbing uh, the Cumberland backpack does. Um, have I used, I don't think I've used nylon webbing extensively, but I've used it a few times. Um, as far as being hard on my hands, what do you think about I don't even know what nylon webbing is. It's the, turn around and look at that Park Sling backpack. Maybe you can grab it off there, the black oh, one. That's a common backpack. Yeah. Uh, 
So here's the small version of the Park Sling backpack. It has a nylon webbing, but it's just the adjustable portion. So this is what she was talking about. That's like about. a seatbelt one. Is that the same thing, but is, that's just wider? Seatbelt is a little bit smoother. It might, okay. It's more of a, not a ribbon, but like it's woven kind of like a This is definitely rough. Ribbon. If you have a heavy bag or something, I would say. Yeah, it would it hurt your shoulder, right? You. Yeah. Yeah, it could. You could always, if you wanted the strength of the nylon webbing, you can always insert it in um, like a fabric tube. I demonstrated on Social Sunday a while back how to insert nylon into strapping. Um, I think it was earlier this year, but I, you should be able to find that on our YouTube channel if you're interested. Sophia says, is Deco Bond a substitute for ShapeFlex or what is the difference between the two? That's a great question. So ShapeFlex is a fusible woven interfacing. It's similar in weight to maybe quilting cotton, but obviously it has the um, the glue beads on it to make it the fusible product. Decker Bond is made by Pollen. The product number is number 809, and it's um, a little bit thicker. Um, it can be used for portions of a bag that you'd like to make a little bit more stiffer, but not super stiff like Peltex or um, wallets. Wallets is another great um, use for Decker Bond. I find that it tends to make the fabric a little bit wrinkly, so my favorite way to use Decker Bond is to first fuse Shape Flex to the wrong side of the fabric and then cut the Decker Bond uh, minus the seam allowance. So if the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, cut it um, a quarter of an inch smaller on all sides to keep it out of the seam allowance. And you can use uh, one layer of Decker Bond, or I really like using two layers of Decker Bond. Like I said, it's not quite as thick as uh, Pollen Peltex, but it gives um, a nice thickness uh, to, to your projects. <clears throat> RC says, I want to know if anyone uses Wonder Under and why. So Wonder Under comes in two, couple different versions. It comes in yardage and it also comes in um, tape, like kind of on a roll. So Wonder Under is a paper backed fusible web. So what that means is it's kind of a two-sided fusible, except uh, one side is initially covered by paper. So what you would do is you would iron the bumpy side of that Wonder Under to the wrong side of your fabric or whatever you're attaching it to, batting or what, what have you. When it's completely cooled back, you'll just peel back the paper and it reveals the second side of the adhesive and then you can fuse it to something else. So um, fusible webs are used in um, applique. Um, you can use Wonder Under if you, say for example, run out of interfacing. Say if you're using fusible fleece, you run out of interfacing, you would like to turn your um, batting that you have on hand into a fusible product. So you could use the Wonder Under for that. Um, I. I most commonly use Wonder Under the tape version for um, making and assembling piping. So it's a really great way to assembling piping, especially if you don't have a piping foot. So um, I do have a video, I, I'd, I'd like to, I feel like I'm gonna be really long-winded about this. So instead of doing that, I'll just point you to, we have a video on our YouTube channel on how to make piping. And I demonstrate how to use the Wonder Under tape in that particular video. So you can find that on the YouTube channel or on our website. Um, would you consider designing a bag using real leather? So we do have the Easy Leather Hobo bag, which I made using uh, faux leather, or um, I made another version in cork. So that's a free pattern and video you can find on the YouTube channel. Um, I don't use a ton of leather. I have used um, small bits of leather for accents on bags in the past. Um, but uh, to answer your question, I besides the Easy Leather Hobo bag, that's the only other pattern I have for strictly um, leather or faux, le faux leather use. Um, Elisette says, will you have a video for the Rockstar bag soon? Um, Someone asked about, that's what that bag, they asked what's the bag oh. behind you with the green star? Yeah, I better get on it because people have been asking about yeah. this bag a lot lately. Um, as soon as we finish the videos for the four brand new patterns that I was working on, that little sneak peek that I showed you about before, our next four pack video bundle, um, I don't know the date yet just because we're still working on the four new patterns, but the Rockstar bag will 100% be in that next four pack video bundle. I'm hoping to do um, two previously released patterns, including the Rockstar bag, and then two new patterns in that bundle. So hopefully that'll be late winter, early spring, something like that. Um, Charlotte says, nice shirt, Danny. I live a mile and a half from Johnson Space Center. Have you ever been? Uh, no, I've never been. Um, I haven't been either. Nope. I'd love to go to outer space and just bypass the space center. <laughs> yeah, I like your shirt. It reminds me of shirts I've seen at Target for kids. Um, 
This is where I got it, actually. Particularly in the girls' section, they have um, science-related T-shirts at Target, which I think is really cool, like NASA. Sarah says, what is your traditional Christmas meal? Do you want to go first with that? I'm going to have a sip well, of water. Well, we have Christmas and Christmas Eve parties. So Christmas Eve, I know you asked Christmas, but I'd like <clears> to mention <throat> Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Eve is generally ham, and that would be Sarah's mother cooking that. <clears throat> Four-star chef. And uh, <clears throat> her grandmother usually cooks Christmas dinner. And we've had uh, a lot of different kind of foods for Christmas dinner, <clears throat> actually. So I wouldn't say there's a, a go-to traditional <clears throat> Christmas meal. We've had... Pork. I want to say there's beef meals. Um, maybe my, even turkey. My mom's time. making brisket this year. Oh, um, is she making brisket? Yeah. So is Oma making ham? Uh, I think that's the lineup okay, for so this year. Okay, so they switched it up. Okay. And they're, uh, I don't want to say they're panicking because I, I wouldn't consider it that, but I, I stopped meat, eating meat before Thanksgiving. And so they're like, what are you going to eat? Uh, let's make sure to load up on the vegetables. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. I can always find something and it'll be okay. Patricia, <clears throat> excuse me, Patricia says, where is the best place to buy fusible Thermalam? So Pellon makes a product called Thermalam and it is fusible. It's a little bit more substantial than fusible fleece. So the Thermalam is also made out of fleece, but it's a needled product. So it's um, more dense and it lies, I think, more flat against the fabric. So Pellon Thermalam, if you're in the United States, uh, your local big box store should carry that, um, like Joanne Fabrics. Um, if you're overseas in other countries, um, uh, for example, Australia, um, Pellon's uh, sister company is called uh, Legacy, and Legacy also makes Thermalam. The product numbers are really similar. Um, I think one digit, I think there's one letter that's different in front of them, but um, uh, they also make a Thermalam product. And I'm trying to think about other countries, which products are similar. There's other brands that are available in other countries, but... Um, the Pellon Legacy are probably the most common ones. Um, and you look this way, but I'm like, what? <laughs> Denise says, do you have a YouTube channel? Is she asking you? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's you because it's your YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so oh, sweetness. Denise, Just... is, Denise is watching on Facebook, so that I see that's yeah, the question. That's what I was... um, so the YouTube channel is also called So Sweetness, and um, we have viewers watching for both during yeah, our shows. Yeah, you can check it out right now if you want to see both. Yeah. Actually, YouTube, you can watch in 1080p. Which is a higher level, and you Facebook 720. Higher higher level of what? Just to... resolution quality. So the, if you do have a decent internet connection, you can watch in better quality. Facebook is implementing the same quality of stream capacity, just not for our channel yet. Other channels have it, but we do not have that option. But soon, right? Is that? What I hope so. We uh, there's no set time. We don't have any control over that, right? Nope. Michelle says, "Have you ever used Terial Magic for the fabric to be sewn to foam?" I haven't. I've used it for, um, so it kind of makes the fabric um, after you, I've only used it once and it was probably six six or seven years ago. When you apply to the fabric um, with, I believe, steam from your iron, it makes the fabric look really nice and crinkly, kind of like a, reminds me of like a, a rose, like how it kind of, uh, help me out here, Danny. I don't know what the material is you're talking about. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how it looks when applied to foam. I guess I, I can investigate it, though. Um, I'll write myself a note. Yeah, it's been many years since I've used it, though, and it was only the once. Jennifer says, I have some cotton duck weight fabric. Any changes that need to be made so they work well? It's heavier than the quilting cotton. So that's a great question. It also kind of slightly depends on the pattern that you're working from. So say, for an example, um, the... Aragon bag that we were showing earlier because this has so many pockets. If I were to make this with a duck canvas, uh, you might have a hard time, especially because the pockets are all over the place and create extra bulk in the seam. Um, you might want to take that into consideration if there's front pockets or side pockets or extra layers that you'll be adding to your project. Um, let me try to think of what else. Um, but if you're making something without all extra pockets, such as like a Baker Street bag, I think you should be fine to use um, the interfacing as called for in the pattern. Um, an easy way to check, I actually got a couple emails about this in the last week. An easy way to check if your machine, because every machine handles thickness um, a little bit differently, an easy way to do a check with your materials before you start on the project is to kind of simulate um, sewing the seams together. So you can take, I would suggest taking, um, 
If the pattern calls for foam interfacing, I'd suggest taking uh, two scraps of foam interfacing so you can cut maybe two five inch squares um, and then about uh, maybe four to six layers of fabric to simulate your exterior fabric, your lining fabric, and your shape flex, which is usually attached to your lining fabric. Go ahead and just stack those up and see how your machine handles going through all those layers. If you're having a hard time, you might need to make some adjustments, slight adjustments to your interfacing, such as instead of the foam interfacing, you can go with something a little bit thinner, maybe like a fusible fleece. Um, but if your machine is handling all of those test layers just fine, you can go ahead and feel a little bit more confident about tackling the fabrics and interfacing for your chosen project. Karen says, do you use thicker thread in your Juki 2010 for top stitching? I tend to use the same thread for the whole project. So I like using 40 weight thread and I'll use that same thread for the top stitching. If you like a real thick looking top stitching, such as on straps, you might wanna do a little test with a 12 weight thread in the top and 40 weight thread in the bobbin. You don't wanna use 12 weight in both the top and the bottom. You'll, your machine will um, throw a hissy fit, so to speak. Um, so you can try that out and see how you like it just on a little test. Um, bit of fabric or scrap, um, but I like using 40 weight for the whole project. Bonita says, Sarah wanted you to know I am teaching a little girl to make a bag. She chose the Baker Street bag. That is wonderful. I hope when she finishes her bag, you'll email me a picture. I'd love to see it. Um, Sarah at SoSweetness.com is my email, Sarah with no H, and um, it's really exciting. We've seen some kids over the years making bags and posting them on yep. in the Facebook group, so it's always really exciting to Michelle see. Michelle Graham's sons made um, yep. desktop cubes off the top of my head. It's really exciting to see kids uh, find their love of sewing. and um, That's pretty awesome. Yep. Michelle says, could make Sarah's shoulder strap pad when you use nylon strapping for a strap. Oh, that's a really great that's idea in regards to the question about the nylon strapping, if it's hard on your hands or shoulder. Thank you, Michelle. Laura says, have you thought about designing a swim bag? So, um, I don't know. I know I've had a few mentions or requests for that over the years. Um, I always like to know a little bit about more what the user is intending for the swim bag, just because- uh, Probably something durable that can handle chlorine, hold yeah. goggles, you know, something similar we use. But if you have any thoughts about a swim bag that you'd like to see, again, you can feel free to email me. It helps me get my thoughts going when people can say, um, I carry this when I go swimming, this and that, or I need a pocket for this. So um, yeah, feel free to email me and I'm happy to listen to suggestions. I keep an idea file in my email with things that people have suggested so that I can uh, hopefully get to them one day. Are you calling it on the questions? Yep. Okay, so um, that's it on the questions. I apologize if I did not get to your question live. Uh, we're gonna head over to our giveaway for this week. Um, uh, to en enter the giveaway, all you have to do is answer my giveaway question. Go ahead and type that either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching this video. Type it in the comments. And my giveaway question for this week is, what is your favorite childhood memory? So the giveaway prize for this week is a $40 gift certificate to SoSweetness.com. What's your favorite childhood memory? Um, every weekend, I would, my father and me would play against my brother and my neighbor football. No matter what time of the season, we'd go every weekend to the park and play two-on-two -two football. Then we play baseball in the summer. We always did two on two. It'd be baseball, football, basketball. That's cool. Yep. My memory was similar. I wrote down. Um, so we had two hockey nets in the basement, and we would rollerblade and play like hockey in the basement or uh, basketball outside. So we had a. My dad's a mailman, and one year one of his customers gave him a check because uh, you know you can tip your mailman. And so she gave him a check which covered the purchase of uh, an in-ground basketball hoop. Is that what it's called, in-ground? Yeah. And so he installed the basketball hoop and uh, actually drew the basketball lines on the on the cement. And Super cool. And we would play like around the world and um, it was kind of like a half, half court. Is that what you would call it? Yep. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I remember one of the first um, holidays going by Sarah's parents' house. I think it was Thanksgiving and Sarah's dad was talking a lot of game about playing basketball. So me and him play one-on-one, -on -one and uh, you guys guess what happened. But uh, that's one thing I can't beat him. And working, that dude is tough. This guy is a postman, and he goes to the gym before working eight to ten hours a day walking all day. He is tough as it comes, and 
kudos to you, Bob. You're one tough dude. But sadly, the basketball hoop is no more because I think someone backed <laughs> into it. I thought he cut it down or something. No, so I think someone backed into it and got bent. And, oh, really? Uh, it got. I think so. I think that's what happened. Um, yeah, just as William was ready to play basketball. Oh, we got a hoop in our back of our house. Um, all right, so everyone, thank you for watching thank Social you everyone Sunday. So much. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Great we'll, holidays. We'll see you again next Sunday for Social Sunday. And have yep. a great, fantastic week and happy sewing. Just Bye, everybody. Find the ending buttons around here somewhere. Here.